It looks like Quez Watkins has avoided a serious shoulder injury. Jalen Hurts is the clear NFL MVP, and the Jimmy Garoppolo broken foot, that sends shockwaves through the NFC playoffs. We'll explain it all today. I'm Thomas Mott. This is the Thomas Mott Show. What's up, guys? Thomas Mott here. Welcome to the Thomas Mott Show on another Victory Monday. Yes, Philadelphia has really their most complete win of the entire season. does come with a slight cost in terms of Quest Watkins. We'll talk about that, but overall feeling very, very good here on a Monday. We have a lot of Eagles stuff, but also a lot of National Football League stuff as well, including the Jimmy Garoppolo injury, how it impacts the NFC playoffs. Let's jump into everything going on today on a Monday. Let's we'll start with Jeremy Fowler here up on Twitter. This was from last night. Now, we're going to get an update on Quest Watkins this afternoon. Of course, this show, of course, want to get you guys as quickly as possible. It's done in the morning, so I'm sure there will be an update later on this afternoon. But according to Fowler, quote, initial belief is Eagles wide receiver Quez Watkins suffered an AC joint sprain, but MRI coming Monday for full scope of injury per source. Watkins left, uh, left Sunday's game early with a shoulder injury, isn't expected to miss significant time, end quote. And so you're looking at something that could be a pain tolerance thing. If it's an AC joint sprain, you know, you can play with that. It's a matter of pain tolerance. You're going to get shot up, though, for sure. Will he play on Sunday against the Giants? That it remains to be seen. I'm sure the MRI later today will reveal a lot more information, but the fact he avoided a significant injury is is really good news because those shoulder things can be really very, I mean, a wide range of stuff. It can be just a sprain. It can be a tweak. It can be a break. It can be a tear. It can be a whole bunch of different stuff that could be out for a significant period of time. I think Dallas Goddard still on IR uh, going into this week against the New York Giants. So good news there for, for uh, Quez Watkins. Philadelphia should be okay, even if he is not available this week, but not a significant long-term injury, at least as of now, uh, according to ESPN's Jeremy Fowler. Now, a lot of people are going to immediately ask the question of Thomas, what about bringing in Odell Beckham Jr.? Well, we'll talk about Odell OBJ and his Cowboy meeting taking place as we speak right now. More on that in just one second. But really, it's quite simple for Philadelphia. They will really simply just move up one of these wide receivers who are further down on the depth chart, most notably Zach Paschal. He would take over the Quest Watkins role if, you know, he's going to miss a significant amount of time or even just a couple of weeks. Now, different players, right? Paschal more of a possession receiver, you know, get the first down, maybe, you know, truck somebody on his way to the first down. Quez is a speed guy. So you got to kind of, you know, call plays a little bit differently with Quez out of the game, but Pascal is there for a reason. He would take a lot more of the first team reps and be that third receiver, much like what Watkins has been the entire year. Now, again, I'm going to see the comments down below saying, Thomas, go get Odo Beckham Jr. Well, as of right now, there is no meeting between Philadelphia and Odo Beckham Jr. because he is set to meet with the Cowboys today, he is meeting as we speak today, and then also tomorrow, according to Jeremy Fowler and, of course, the star in Tart Archer. It's going to be similar to the, uh, as you see, meetings he had with the Giants Thursday, Friday, Bills Friday, Saturday, and the fact he left Buffalo without a contract tells you that he's probably going to sign with the Dallas Cowboys. Plus, Dallas dropped 54 last night on the Indianapolis Colts. It's going to be very, very, very hard to believe that that OBJ is going to leave the Cowboy building on Tuesday next week, and not, or Tuesday this week, a.k.a. tomorrow, and one, have more meetings open, like meeting with Philadelphia, or two, not having a contract. I think he's going to be a Cowboy. By the time you watch this show or listen to this show, he might already be a Cowboy. So no surprise there, but the idea that Quest is hurt, go get OBJ, it's just, it's just not going to happen. Let's just be honest here. I try to be as honest as possible here on the Thomas Mott Show. This is like a 1% chance of him becoming an Eagle, and like a 95% chance of him becoming a Dallas Cowboy. All right, I want to get into, of course, the Jimmy Garoppolo injury and what it means for not only the NFC playoffs, but for Philadelphia. Trust me, mega implications, as well as the big Cowboy injury as well, coming up in just one second. First, though, how do you guys feel about Philadelphia versus the Giants? It's officially Giants week here. I don't remember the last time we waited this long for an Eagles-Giants game, and of course, I'm an Eagles season. If you guys feel confident about that, Philadelphia's flying high, you can use our, our DraftKings link down below and bet $5 on the Eagles and get back $150 if they win by using, of course, the link, the TFM website, and the link on your screen. Sign up by clicking here. Sign up and uh, deposit $5 plus. Dollars. Put a $5 plus dollar money line bet on the Eagles next game. Get $150 back if the Eagles win. It's $150 in addition to your winnings in free bets. Jump in on this deal, except for one week, because money line is just, you know, the team winning. Except for the Washington week, you would have gotten that $150 of your first time bet sign up uh, in free bets with DraftKings. So if you guys feel confident, like I do, go down below. It'll be all linked in the description box. 
All right, Jimmy G, in just one second. First, though, we do need to at least mention, and the Bleeding Green Nation article does a good job here, that N'Kobe Dean and Britton Covey had their best games of the entire year. And Dean is getting a lot of praise on Twitter because he's like the Twitter fan favorite for the Philadelphia Eagles. But he did see a couple of snaps late in this football game whenever Kazir White had a little bit of a stinger, and he was fantastic. But the Bleeding Green Nation article goes through all the Eagles rookies and shows you what they did this past week. Davis was back in the lineup, but very little. I don't think he got 20 snaps, which I talked about was kind of the number I thought he would have. That is by you know design. They wanted to just slowly get him back. I think he was like 10. That's fantastic. No issues there. I made a couple of plays. Great job back there by Davis and the rest of the coaching staff. Jurgens is kind of in on as a tight end on goal line situation, so he's not playing a bunch, but he doesn't really need to play a bunch, so you can't really grade him there. But Dean does get the A- minus from Bleeding Green Nation, and that is 100% correct because... Listen, he's, he's 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 making the most of a small opportunity. There's a reason he hasn't been on the football field, and that is because Kazir White has been so good, along with T.J. Edwards. But Dean, again, when you get in there for a couple of snaps, you got to make an impact, and that's exactly what he did. He had a tackle for a loss. He, he blew up a run play where he got a holding call on him. And I think that he had like six total tackles and 10, 15 snaps. Really good job by N'Kobe Dean. And another person they didn't talk about at all during the broadcast, that was Reed Blankenship, the undrafted safety, who's in right now uh, due to the fact that C.J. Gardner-Johnson is placed on IR. Blankenship was great. You never called his name. That means he was doing a good job when getting burnt by the Titan receivers. Now it's Tennessee, but still good job there after the breakup performance against the Green Bay Packers. And finally, Britton Covey. Wow, how about Covey actually returning punts? I mean, <laughs> shocking how great he was returning punts. You saw in my reaction video uh, from yesterday, I was joking around, but the fact that Britton Covey was doing something besides run three yards and then get obliterated is really good news. If the Eagles special teams actually plays like they did yesterday, the rest of the year, even more dangerous, a three-headed monster for Philadelphia. Thumbs up for the rookies, though. Good job for them. Uh, it's nice to see that they are, uh, you know, performing well and that this draft class by Howie Roseman has been really, really good. All right, again, Garoppolo in one second. I do want to quickly mention this tweet from Lord Brunson. Of course, we love Lord Brunson, one of the great Eagle content creators. This just sums up, like, I could do a whole show on how great Jalen Hurts was yesterday, but this just sums it up right here, okay? Brunson says, I can't think of a player who's taken a leap this drastic. Look at the completion percentage jump. 11%. That does not happen in the National Football League. Right. This was the whole knock on Jalen Hurts, was that he was too inaccurate and that he couldn't throw the football down down the field and that he wasn't going to improve enough to make a difference. Because normally completion percentage, whatever it is in college, it's basically the same in the pros. That's like historically how it goes. Maybe a couple percentages better or a couple percentage points worse, but never 11%. That is insane. Look at the yards per attempt. Look at 3.2. Remember, couldn't throw the football. 17.1 this year. That's absolutely insane. And then your TD to INT ratio, 11 to 1. Three interceptions this year. He has five total turnovers, two fumbles, but three interceptions. It's like a Nick Foles 27 and 2, 27 and 3, whatever the number was back whenever he had his magical run with Chip Kelly. It's. Oh, man, it's, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable where he's at. And yes, he's the MVP. We'll talk more about that later on this week. All right, let's get to the Garoppolo stuff. I've stalled long enough here. This has significant NFC impact. Bleeding Green Nation has a good write-up here. Seriously, like, we talk about National League, their national football stuff, our national story of the day. This is it, and it impacts Philadelphia, but it really impacts all you guys who watch this show who are not Philadelphia Eagle fans. This is a big blow. Now, I... I used to cover the 49ers way back when, and I always thought Jimmy Garoppolo was a really, really good quarterback, and I really was getting to a point, you saw it in my interview with Philly 500 this past week, where the Cowboys and the 49ers are the two biggest threats to Philadelphia. With Garoppolo out with a broken foot in yesterday's win against the Miami Dolphins, they're still a dangerous football team. They can still win with Brock Purdy, but they are no longer a serious threat in the NFC. And Maybe I'll eat my words, you know, in a playoff game, but as of right now, you got to feel really, really good about the Eagles' chances because of the Jimmy Garoppolo injury. Now, we never want to root against or root for someone getting injured. This is terrible. I feel really bad for him. But it definitely shakes up the overall situation in the NFC playoffs. Brock Purdy is going to be the quarterback. I called a Brock Purdy game back in my Baylor play-by-play -play days in college. And you see here, he was the 262nd overall pick in the 2022 NFL Draft. That's 262 out of 262, according to Bleeding Green Nation. He was, quote, Mr. Irrelevant, right? The last guy taken. They also have Jacob Eason on their practice squad, the former Georgia quarterback and also Washington quarterback. But the main point here is that even though their defense is so good and even though their defense is really, really good, the five remaining games for the 49ers, as you see, are not easy. Bucks, Seahawks, Commanders, Raiders, Cardinals, all good football teams battling for playoff spots, maybe minus the Cardinals, but still. And then you have the issue of the NFC playoff picture, right? Let's assume the Niners are going to slip a little bit, which 
they are. They're, they're, they're not going to win out. They're going to slip a little bit. They still play Seattle one more time. That bumps them out of the three seed. That bumps them out of hosting a playoff game. That means they would slide down here to either the five or the six or the seven, most likely the six, because the Giants have to play Philadelphia twice. They have to play Dallas, uh, I believe, again. I could be wrong on that. They have a tough schedule the remainder of the year. So how I see this going, Dallas is going to be your five seed, and they are the biggest threat now. I mean, officially, the Dallas Cowboys dropped 51 yesterday. That's that's massive. I mean, it's scary. If you're an Eagle fan like myself, that's scary. But if you're a Cowboy fan, you're feeling really, really good. But Dallas is going to be the five. It's too big of a gap for Philadelphia and Dallas, in my opinion, unless the Eagles really fumble the next couple of weeks. But I think they're, they will, excuse me, will be fine. So you have your one and two seeds locked. This is going to become Seattle. The three seed will, will be Seattle. Tampa will be the, the four seed. Dallas, the five seed. I think the 49ers are the six seed. And then the Giants or the Commanders are the seven seed, right? They tied yesterday, which was ridiculous. That means it's going to have a dramatic impact on who plays who and who faces off in the wildcard round. In that scenario, bear with me here. You would have Tampa, Dallas. So Dallas goes on the road to Tom Brady. Probably a winnable football game because Tampa's not that good this year, but still on the road wild card. Minnesota would have to go ahead and play the Giants or the the Commanders. Kirk Cousins in a playoff game. Then you would have a 49ers versus Seahawks matchup in my scenario as the 3-6, which could potentially either eliminate Seattle instantly or the 49ers could barely squeak one away and then probably play Dallas in the next round. And that's the key factor there is you could play Dallas in the next round or the Dallas Cowboys could go to the Minnesota Vikings, giving Philadelphia an easier division round matchup. Now, this is all going to change. I know. I say anytime I talk about the NFC playoffs or just you know the draft or anything that is based on record, it's going to change. But Garoppolo being hurt is brutal for the 49ers who honestly with that defense it was Philadelphia Dallas and San Francisco as your three real factor teams in the NFC it's down to Philadelphia and Dallas in my opinion and for all you Viking fans out there I know some of you guys are out there you almost lost to the Jets you should have and you really should have at least come close to losing to the Patriots on Thanksgiving evening so I don't want to hear anything about the Vikings at least not yet all right let's finish with this big injury to the Dallas Cowboys is Anthony Brown he tore his Achilles last night in that 54-19 54-19 win against the Colts, according to many people with Dallas. Todd Archer here is writing up uh, on it. This is really a big blow for a Cowboy secondary that has played very, very well. He is the cornerback opposite of Trayvon Diggs, right? And so you have your number one cornerback and then a really good number two cornerback. This is a devastating blow for Dallas. Now, it doesn't mean Dallas is going to be bad after this. Dallas is serious. Dallas is legit. And I want to say that right now, in case Philadelphia has trouble with Dallas on Christmas Eve, people are going to be like, Thomas, you said the Eagles are the best team. They are. You see what happened yesterday. But 54 points against the Colts, most of which coming in the second half, is very impressive. we got to at least acknowledge that. But Anthony Brown getting injured is significant and needs to be, I mean, at least said here as a possible blow to the Cowboys secondary and a defense that has really kept him in football games, especially early on, like you saw last night when Dak Prescott threw two interceptions, which he's done a lot so far this year. So... Again, whole point of Thomas Macho is to dive into everything, right? I like the Philadelphia Eagles. You like the Philadelphia Eagles. But we got a lot of other things going on, whether it's, you know, Anthony Brown getting the Achilles injury, NFC playoffs, Jimmy Garoppolo. And so we welcome everybody here on the Thomas Macho Show, if you're an Eagle fan or not, as I try to cover everything, basically anything I want here, uh, as it is my show. So make sure you guys subscribe. Thumbs up. We'll have plenty more content uh, this week, plenty more shows, whether you're driving to and from work, heading to school, whatever it is. Make sure you guys hang out with us as we, again, we'll keep you updated on everything going on and give you my take on everything happening in the National Football League and Philadelphia. But let's just finish by being positive and admitting here, Philadelphia looked fantastic yesterday, their most complete win of the year, and that was really fun to watch. I'm Thomas, out of time. See ya.